Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Chris Turner. I'm the founder and director of training for Radical Transformation. I have almost 30 years of experience in the continuous process improvement field, particularly with Lean, Lean Six Sigma and change management. Today I'd like to talk to you about a subject that I find that most people don't really understand when it comes to implementing Lean Principles. I'm calling this video Lean Principles versus Process Failures. However, another name could have been the good, the bad and the ugly. I'll explain this as we go through. So let me start by asking a critical question. Why is failure a good thing when implementing Lean Principles? It's important to think about this question. And I know you're probably saying to yourself that this guy has gone crazy. Is he really saying that I need to fail to succeed in implementing Lean Principles? I know you're probably thinking this is the most stupid thing that you've ever heard and that's usually most people's reactions at this point. But in fact this is exactly what I'm saying because the truth is that without failure there's no opportunity for improvement. It's like they say at Toyota, no problem is a problem. So every organization experiences problems. The point that I'm trying to make here is can they see them as opportunities for improvements? However, before we get too deep into this topic, we need to define a failure to make sure that we're all on the same page. So the question here is, what is a failure? Well, I looked online at the Merriam-Webster Online Dictionary and they have a definition of failure, which is this, and I quote, a mission of occurrence or performance specifically a failure to perform a duty or expected action. Now let's take a moment to really understand this definition of a failure because it's important. Now the first part of the definition said this, that a failure is an omission of occurrence or performance. So what does this really mean? It's important to get to the root cause of what this is. Well it can be interpreted as saying that Something didn't happen when it was supposed to, right? The second part of the definition says this. A failure to perform a duty or expected action. Again, what does this mean? Well, it means that something was supposed to happen or occur at a given time, but it didn't happen. So in other words, an action was not executed or completed to meet a specific defined expectation. So why is all this important? Why am I talking about this? Well, it's important because the general perception of failure is that it's a bad thing and that it should never happen. However, is this viewpoint realistic? Can we ever achieve a state where there is absolutely no failures? Again, there's no way, absolutely not. Because if there were no failures, how would we learn from our mistakes and then go on to make improvements? And I know that failures are not always pretty, especially when they affect the environment we live in, or people's lives, or they create disasters. But the real truth is this, that without failure, the human race would never have developed many of the technologies that they have today that actually help them to overcome many of these problems. You see, existence relies on failure because it gives us an opportunity to find a better way of doing things and then to reduce the chance of them reoccurring. So now you're probably thinking, what has all this got to do with implementing Lean Principles? Well, I can tell you that it has a lot to do with it and it's very important. See, the truth is that failure and Lean Principles go hand in hand. They're kind of two sides of the same coin. See, Lean Principles ex exist because of failure of one kind or another. See, to be successful when implementing Lean Principles into your company, you need to fail and you need to do it often. Seriously, I really hope that you fail time and time again during your Lean implementation. I know this is shocking, 
and that's what most people think. They say to me, Chris, how can you say this? You're supposed to be a lean expert with almost 30 years of experience, and your job surely is supposed to be to help people to succeed, not to help them to fail. Well, here's why I want you to fail, and I want you to be happy about it. See, failure is nothing more than a feedback you get from any system that's telling you that something's not working right. So failure is another word for an outcome, or to put it in another way, it's a result of performance. In fact, someone once said, there are no failures, there are only results. So you see, if you can change your thinking to accept results, or as failure is nothing more than a result, then you start to realize that you can influence the outcome. However, now you may not like the current result, but by using the tools and techniques from the Lean Principles Toolbox, you can start to change any process and create a better result. This is what we call improvement. It's important to understand that failure is necessary for learning. And why would I say this? Well, we're all told that we need to go learn and try to become an expert or specialist in some specific subject, right? So why do we need to do this? Well, it's because we all want to get it right the first time and not make a mistake. We need to project knowledge and confidence in our own capabilities and then show the world that we actually know what we're talking about. But talking and doing are two different things. But at this point, I need to take a reality check or give myself and you a reality check. How many people do you know right now that can learn something and then apply it without ever making a mistake or failing? I need you to be honest here. How many perfect people can you think of right now who never make mistakes? Right, you've got it. Zero. None. How many organizations do you know that can implement a new system such as Lean Principles without ever experiencing any problems. Again, zero. None of them. Even with the guidance of a lean expert to mentor them, there's always going to be growing pains and problems will surface along the way. There is not one person, one group, or one organization on this planet that didn't go through a learning curve when they started to apply their knowledge out of their head and put it into action to make something happen in a different way. See, lean implementation is no different. It's simply a journey of discovery that involves watching, listening, and then learning by doing. And all this learning is, is the preparation for a person, a group, or an organization so they know how to start their lean journey and then be able to reach their final destination if they ever get there because it's a continuous journey. So implementing Lean Principles into any business is a process of learning by doing or that is converting knowledge into action. Now this involves people collaborating together, working together to find new improved methods and then putting these into practice. However, when you put people together it's important to ensure that everyone is using the same roadmap and they're all heading towards the same destination. So everybody needs a common goal to work towards when implementing Lean Principles. So at this point, let me ask you a very important question. Why do you want to implement Lean Principles? Any person, group or organization must be able to answer this question and convert their answers into their own roadmap. This will allow everyone in the company to be on the same page. I want to ask you another question. Are you willing to see failure as a positive learning experience rather than just another negative condition of doing business? You see, it's important because the answer to this question will define if an organization is going to be successful with their lean implementation or not. So performance is, to, performance is defined by outcomes or results. And these can be tracked to determine if they're following a positive or a negative trend. 
Sing Ling Principles teaches that the feedback we receive when tracking performance results is the driving force behind all continuous process improvement. So what I mean here is that to manage anything we must be able to measure it. Then we need to track it and then trend the, those results over time. See without measurement we never know if we're being consistent in our business practices or if our customers receiving the right things at the right time. So if we cannot measure a process then we enter a world of failure with an unknown root cause and this is nothing more than process chaos. See when failure can be measured it brings with it understanding or what I call insight and this puts you one step closer to achieving success. Insight gives a person, a group or any organization the ability to define a clear strategy towards creating change and then improving a process. Now when the strategy is executed the outcome creates a result and this gives us feedback and we can take this feedback and evaluate it to determine if the process results were the same as the expected results that were defined in the strategy. Now if the results were less than expected then there's a need to implement countermeasures or corrective actions to make adjustments to the original strategic initiative. So here's another question for you to ponder. What is the one thing that separates a business which successfully implemented Lean Principles from one that was unsuccessful? Well I can tell you it's the way they perceived failure and how they dealt with it. You see a successful Lean business will always see failure as an opportunity for improvement and they'll use this to drive their continuous process improvement and then use problem solving tools to identify and eliminate the root causes of the problem or as we call it in lean waste and then one by one as they discover them they deal with their failures and then they try to correct them until they reach their dip tipping point or as I call it critical mass. Now when a person, a group or an organization achieves this critical mass they'll experience a cultural shift to where lean principles are fully integrated into their everyday activities. At this point there's no separation between work activities or continuous improvement. So as employees perform their daily tasks they're empowered to look for ways to improve their own workplace. Now on the other hand a business that is or has been unsuccessful when trying to implement their Lean Principles doesn't see failure as an opportunity, in fact they see it as a kind of natural disorder which is a consequence of doing business. It's just something they have to endure or put up with and the way they overcome it is by working harder to push through it. Now the sad thing is that these types of companies are just doomed to making the same mistakes repeatedly. In fact I'll call on Albert Einstein here because he said the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over again expecting different results. And that's what these companies are doing. See the notion that many companies labor under is the belief that thinking of change is the same, of same as physically implementing it and I can tell you from experience that that is definitely not true. See talking and not taking action is nothing more than playing mind games. So you need to remember that actions always speak louder than words and this is what every employee in any organization is looking for. Action. They don't need words. Words don't do anything. It's action. So failure when implementing Lean Principles is a natural phenomenon and to be successful you need to start to embrace it. You must develop your skills to where you have the confidence in your own abilities to be able to participate in the process and then find a solution to any problem that's presented to you. Now this requires the discipline to follow through and know that you and your team members did the best with what you've got in that moment. 
but the most important thing is to know that you all learn something through the experience. Now the question should never be this, which most people ask, does this work or not work? It should always be, I wonder how many more steps before we reach the tipping point. How many steps before we see Lean Principles become fully integrated into our business practices? That's the real question. So to anyone who's failed and continued on to find the answer, I really acknowledge you because it means you're that much closer to your tipping point and successfully implementing Lean Principles into your organization. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, please email, email me at training at radicaltransformation.com. So until next time, enjoy your lean journey. And again, thank you.